In order to start my laser cutting diorama building series extravaganza off, we needed to upgrade the workbench first as otherwise I would have no idea where I would want to place these dioramas. Now luckily I have good friends over at Hobby Zone. They have some awesome supplies to make your workbench more efficient and upgrade it really nicely. So as you know, I've had this workbench set up for a couple of years and I wanted to update and upgrade it with a couple of new modules and also add a lot of these display modules in there as well. Now these display models are specifically used in my case for display purposes, but you probably already guessed that. Now nonetheless, I'm gonna be upgrading them a little bit. Standard out of the box, they look pretty good. Just a little plain and have a lot of room for improvement and personalization. So that is what I'm gonna be doing in this video. Now, not only do they have these display models, like you see, they have a lot of other models as well uh, for storing paints, sandpaper, different bottles and sizes of paints, and various other cubbies and drawers all around to perfectly fit your needs. So again, if you're interested, check Hobby Zone out. They have much to offer for the modeler and organizing your workbench. Now, what I want to do with them is to upgrade them and make them into smaller dioramas. And the first one I'm going to be doing is a sort of Porsche showroom. I'm currently building the Porsche 911 GT3 from Alpha Model, and I wanted to have a nice display box for it to stay in and that be themed in a Porsche-like showroom. Now for that, I'm gonna be using the Xtool D1 Pro. This is their 20 watt version. They also have a 10 watt and various other lasers on their website. So if you're interested, feel free to check those out. But before I could get started, I needed to change a couple of things that I felt were necessary. With that said and done, let's have a quick glance in the box. I'm not gonna go into super detail. There are many channels out here that have reviewed this machine specifically and other X-Tool machines. The packaging is really nice, super sturdy, has a lot of nice extras in there for you to test and use the machine with and showing the capabilities of what it can do on various different materials. And same goes for the installation or just assembly of the machine. It has nice instructions, but I'm just gonna go over it really quickly and not wanna bore you with it. Many other channels out there have proper content on this so feel free to do a quick search and you'll find plenty out there. For this machine and probably their other range of machines, Xtool has created their own software. Normally I would be using Lightburn, but in this case I'm just using their software since I cannot seem to figure out how to get Lightburn working on my machine. Now this could be a pre-production prototype, I'm not 100% sure, so there might be some snags up there but I simply couldn't get it to work with a uh, light burn. So I just used their own software, which works really nice, really quickly. It still has a couple of upgrades that it could use. It is very difficult to set different settings for different layers and so forth. But overall, a pretty pleasant experience, simple to use, and it has pretty much what you need to get started and to uh, do what you want to do with this machine. Now, if you want to use Lightburn, I have seen many other videos of people using it, so it should be possible. I simply don't seem to be capable of getting that done. After unboxing and assembling the machine, it was ready to go. So I just quickly churned out a couple of test files from my logo. Nothing special. I wanted to see what the machine was capable of and also to test out what I was gonna do for this small diorama. Now keep in mind, I'm doing this very simple and low key just to get started. And probably as the series goes on, I will get more advanced using different techniques, different materials, and uh, probably testing the capabilities of these machines a bit further. I know that this machine can do a lot more than simply just cutting through some cardboard paper. It can cut through a couple millimeter MDF, should do plexiglass, uh, engrave into metal, and a lot of other materials. Like I said earlier, there is a small package included with the machine once you get it the first time that has various different materials in there to show you what it can do exactly. And I've also seen some very promising videos from other YouTubers testing this machine that it has super high capabilities of even cutting through metal. So it is very important to do your research and check out those videos as well as it shows a lot more than what I'm doing in this video. Some quick initial tests completed and the machine working as it should. 
I figured out what I needed to do and that was create that garage or that diorama that I planned to do. And for that I needed a Porsche logo on the background to act as a nice sort of photo wall and I'm going to be doing that on a silver paper as that is used uh, plenty of times in the actual Porsche showrooms as a back wall or just accent colors all over the showroom. So I figured that would be a nice color to use for the actual diorama that I'm building here. So it simply is a silver cardboard paper. I'm going to first off engrave the Porsche logo and the Porsche script that I want to have on the back wall and then do the exact same engraving on a different piece of paper but then go deeper and actually cut through the paper just outlining the Porsche emblem and the Porsche script and then doing it again and again and again on different pieces of paper cutting it through in this case first off with a black piece of paper creating the uh, first initial inlays that I want to put on there for the Porsche script, the small uh, horse, some of the uh, whiskers <laughs> and other small logos like the Stuttgart and the main backing for the Porsche script and the Porsche lettering as well. And I could have done this in a variety of different ways, adding other pieces and colors of paper first and then laying them in. But I kind of was figuring out what I wanted to do during the process and initially thought I would stop after doing the black, but then cut out some red and that looked really good and then I of course had to do the gold as well to finish it off completely. Now none of this is extremely complicated but what it is is extremely small and also very impressive for the machine to be capable of cutting out the exact same shape without missing anything and having it fit perfectly together on multiple different papers thicknesses and simply just gluing it in but also being able to capture the super small details like the Stuttgart lettering. That itself is pretty impressive but I did want to test it out a bit further but before I could do that I needed to finish off the other walls as well and could then move on to the flooring. For the floor I'm simply just using some black paper and added my logo in one of the tiles, cut out the tiles as well and could then glue it all in place. So I decided just to glue it directly into the hobby zone module and glue it to the sides and the walls and the floor as well just to stay there in uh, stay in there permanently. Now since it is just a layer of paper or for the backboard a couple layers of paper it's not really thick so you could just add some other things on top of it if you're sick of it. But if you didn't want to do it this permanently you could have also cut out a smaller box to fit inside here and decorate those walls. Now I know this is a pretty simple project to start off with but you got to start somewhere and don't want to overdo it. So this is what I figured would work really cool and is something I want to do more with different brands for some of the other boxes and probably go a bit more advanced and in detail on some of the other projects. But for now this is a nice comfortable place to start off with if you ask me. And with that this first part of the project is completed and since this is still a review for the Xtool D1 Pro I wanted to get a bit more in detail on the machine itself and also go over the RA2. So the Xtool D1 Pro can be specced to different specifications. You can get it with a different laser, stronger or less strong laser and also the other upgrades that are available is one of these roller modules and the uh, line, the rubber hose that you see is the air assist. Now both of these have been sent out kindly by Xtool for me to test and I gotta be very honest, I'm not an expert on any of these. This is the first time that I'm using air assist and also the first time that I'm using one of these rollers. So there are a couple of learning curves that I have ran into and I simply just started testing around and playing with it to see what is possible and how easy it is to actually get used to it and get it to function the way it should. Now again I want to mention quickly that there are multiple channels out there that go in a lot more depth on what these machines are capable of and I have seen a couple videos going into an incredible amount of detail explaining all of the different options that the RA2 roller system has and it is probably better than something I could ever do so I'm not really going to bother trying to copy him I'd rather you just watch his video if you are interested and I'm just going to play along and see what I can do with this machine. So the RA2 roller system has a couple different configurations in the box and different ways to clamp the subjects that you want to engrave onto and also different ways to mess it up in my case. It is extremely important to set up the machinery 
uh, as it should be. And also the software needs to be calibrated to that machinery. So it is very important to follow all the steps and instructions and do it properly. So the first time I did mess it up, I don't really seem to gel really well with the roller system. However, there is a chuck included as well. The machine needs to be uh, transformed to uh, comply with that machine a little bit, but nothing too complicated. Just unscrew a couple of things, remove it, screw the next parts on, and you're simply ready to go. Then in the software, you need to switch it from the regular laser to uh, the rollers, of course. And if you go from the roller to the actual chuck, you also need to set that as well. But as you can see right here, in the end, I did figure it out. The bottle is completely messed up at this point, but it's a test and this bottle was a freebie, so it doesn't really hurt to just play around and see if you can figure it out. So overall, it's not really all that complicated to do, and the software that Xtool provides is really simple to use, and that is a big plus point. Like I said, it is lacking in a couple of places still, but they are still working on it and updating it. I've heard that the previous version was a lot worse. This one has improved by a lot. So I'm curious to see if they keep updating it and keep improving it along the way. Now that's it for me. If you are interested in one of these machines or more of these projects, feel free to leave a comment down below, subscribe to the channel, and of course, check out the links to go to Xtool and view their full assortment of products.